What if I told you that I discovered who Joy Boy was and that it's been right in our face all along? Ever since Thriller Bark, Oda's been hinting at the truth to the secrets of Joy Boy, the One Piece, and the Void Century. I have 100% proof of who and what Joy Boy was, and if you want to learn who it is, then stay tuned. Okay, so to start this theory off, I truly believe that Ors the First was Joy Boy. I say Ors the First because there are three Ors according to Ors Jr. His Jolly Roger proves that he is in fact Ors the Third, and not Ors the Second, how many of us thought he was. It literally proves that there have been three Ors to roam the Earth. I believe that Ors the First is from the Void Century and in fact Joy Boy. By the way, Ors the Second would be referring to the Ors that Mariah found because he is Ors the Third's dad. Okay, so now to the proof of Ors being Joy Boy. A lot of my proof will be from Oda's foreshadowing events and his clues. Oda has foreshadowed many things, like Sanji being a prince, Sanji going past the red line, and Ace's death. The first foreshadow of Ors the first being Joy Boy and being the owner of the giant straw hat and Mary Joyce is when Ors the third wears a straw hat that Ace gave him. I think and when we look back on this, we will realize that Oda was trying to tell us something big. The next set of foreshadowing events will be in the Thriller Bark arc. Oda foreshadows things and also does many parallels with Thriller Bark and Mary Joyce, which proves Ors the first was Joy Boy. The first way Oda foreshadows Ors being Joy Boy is when he has Mariah put Luffy's shadow in Ors. Luffy is believed to be the current Joy Boy, so when he put Luffy's shadow in Ors, Oda is literally trying to tell us that Joy Boy was an Oars. After Oars has Luffy's shadow in him, he even tries to put a giant straw hat on his head. Alright, I know that Oars has Luffy's personality and shadow, but maybe it was just another hint from Oda that an Oars from the Void Century was the owner of the giant straw hat. The next hint from Oda in Thriller Bark is the cover on Volume 48. This cover page is a picture of Ors and Luffy doing the same thing. This is a hint because if you look at the bottom part of Ors' mouth, it looks like Ors' horns on Luffy. This is a hint because Luffy is the current Joy Boy, so Oda is trying to hint that Joy Boy was an Ors. The next huge hint that Oda gives us is Ors' first introduction in Thriller Bar and the giant straw hat scene in Mary Joyce. If you reread or rewatch Thriller Bar, you'll notice that Mariah had Ors the second's dead corpse in the gigantic freezer. Does this sound familiar at all? Just like how the giant straw hat was in a gigantic freezer. Mariah even calls this freezer a special freezer for some reason. The scene of Mariah walking in the giant freezer and Eam walking in the giant freezer are weirdly similar. To start off, the doors of both freezers look very alike. After that, notice how Mariah and Eam are both carrying Luffy. Mariah is carrying Luffy's shadow, while Eam is carrying Luffy's wanted poster. They both have to walk through some stairs and both freezers look like their structure is built the same. Through this parallel, Oda is telling us that the giant straw hat belonged to an Ors from the Void Century, who was in fact, Joy Boy. Another parallel between Thriller Bark and Mary Joyce is the Thriller Bark castle and the Mary Joyce castle. They look very similar and the inside of the castle must also be similar, or maybe even the same, because they both have giant freezers in them. I don't know where Mariah got this chunk of land, but it has to be some ruin from the past. With the information in part 1, I still had a few doubts that Ors was THE Joy Boy, but after I found the information that I will present in part 2, I was 100% sure that it was Ors. Part 2 will include Gold D. Roger, Rox, Ors, Joy Boy, Luffy, Blackbeard, Bellamy, and strangely enough, the Wizard of Oz. Okay, I know that may sound pretty random, but just hear me out. Alright, so to start this off, here is where Oda gives us some of his biggest hints in the form of code, symbolism, or play on words. I believe that in some way, Rox, Goldie, Roger, and Ors are connected to each other. I believe that Rox and Goldie Roger are reincarnations of Ors, or should I call him Joy Boy. I used to somewhat doubt that theory, but after finding out all this information, I know it's true. Okay, 
So I know Roxy Zebek, Goldie Roger, and Ors are all connected by looking at their names. Look at their names for a sec and try to notice something that connects them. Well, if you look at all their last names, Roger, Zebek, and Ors, you'll notice that they are all weirdly connected because they are all parts of a pirate ship. Roger is just like Jolly Roger, which is the flag of a pirate ship. Oars were stick poles that were used to row or steer a boat through the water. Lastly, Zebek was a small three-mast Mediterranean ship that existed in the 16th through the 19th century. So what in this world has both a Jolly Roger and some oars? That's right, a Zebek. If you don't believe that these were meant to be connected, then wait, there's more. Now, for the next part, let's look at their first names. Their first names are Gold, Rocks, and Oars. So what do you get when you take Gold, Rocks, and put them together? That's right, you'll end up with Golden Oars. Now this Oars won't be spelled as an O-A-R-S, but it will be spelled as an O-R-E-S. This may not be the way that it is spelled or translated in the manga, but I truly believe that Oda meant to put this play on words. We have to remember that Oda is a genius, and he's the type of guy to put homophones, even if they're in English, as clues and hints in One Piece. For the next connection with their names, I'm going to be using their Will of Deeds. If you take both of their Will of Deeds and put them together, you get an O, just like the first letter and initial of Oars. Now if you like these three connections with Rocks, Roger, and Oars, just wait, there's even more. The next connection with the three of them will also be with the Wizard of Oz. The first person I will connect to the Wizard of Oz is Gold D. Roger. He's connected to it with his first name, Gold. Gold D. Roger represents the Yellow Brick Road because his name is Gold, and the Yellow Brick Road is made out of gold bricks. The Yellow Brick Road is also meant to represent the gold currency in America. If you don't think that's enough for him and the Yellow Brick Road to be a connection, hear this out. Quote unquote from the Wizard of Oz, it says, They are currently striding along the Yellow Brick Road to fame. The first step on the Yellow Brick Road to fame and riches. Does that part about fame and riches sound familiar? Well, the very first quote in One Piece is, Gold Roger, the king of the pirates had achieved it all. Wealth, fame, and power had all been his. He resembles the Yellow Brick Road because he has already achieved wealth and fame. The Yellow Brick Road is the first step to fame and riches. For many pirates, Gold D. Roger is the first step to fame and riches when he inspired them to go get the One Piece. The next connection with the Wizard of Oz is Rocks. What's the first thing you think about when you think of Rocks D. Zebek? For me, it's the God Valley incident. Okay, so now let's say God Valley resembles rocks. Well, in the Wizard of Oz, there is a legendary place called the Emerald City. The Emerald City from the Wizard of Oz looks exactly like God Valley. I believe God Valley was based off the Emerald City. So now, after the Wizard of Oz connects to both Goldie Roger and Rock Zebek, you may ask, well, how does it connect to ores? Well, it connects to Oars because another name for Oars is literally Oz, O-Z. According to the One Piece wiki, Oars is sometimes incorrectly called Oz. I have read many English translations where his name is spelled Oz. And if you watch the English dub, you will also see that they call him Oz and not Oars. So this got me thinking, why would some English translations call him Oz and some call him Oars? I think that some call him Oz because in the Japanese translation, his name is pronounced Oz or spelled like how Oz would be spelled. The English translations through Shonen Jump is Oars because Oda told them to make it that way. Now why would Oda purposefully give Oars two names? Maybe it's for all these wordplay connections that I have mentioned. I truly believe that none of it is a coincidence. I don't know how much of a Wizard of Oz fan Oda is but it seems like he's seen it a time or two. My last connection with Rox, Roger, and Oars also includes Bellamy. In chapter 224, Bellamy quote unquote says, Listen, the age of pirate dreams is over. El Dorado, the Emerald City, the One Piece. 
Fools who are blinded by fantasy treasures can't see the riches lying right at their feet. So from this quote, I'm going to assume that all three of these legends are real in the One Piece world. First of all, El Dorado has already been proven to be real. The One Piece, well, you know. And then, the Emerald City must be God Valley because it looks just like it. These three locations from Bellamy's quote describes Roger, Rocks, and Oars. El Dorado represents Roger because his first name is Gold and he is literally the Golden Man. He also found El Dorado and even signed his name on it. Emerald City represents Rocks because God Valley looks exactly like Emerald City. Lastly, the One Piece describes Oars because I'm going to assume that he's Joy Boy and created the One Piece so a future generation can find the One Piece. That's the last connection between just Roger, Rocks, and Oars. The next set of hints that proves that Oars is Joy Boy includes the characters Blackbeard, Luffy, Rocks, Roger, Oars the First, and Joy Boy. Oars is connected to Goldie Roger because Oars created the One Piece while Roger found it. And they also both had a straw hat. Luffy is connected to Goldie Roger and Oars because I'm going to assume that he also will find the One Piece and he also wears the Straw Hat. He is even the captain of the Straw Hat Pirates and made the Straw Hat his Jolly Roger. Now for Rocks and Blackbeard, they are connected to Joy Boy in a different way. Let me start out by saying that I believe that Rocks and Blackbeard both either believe or know that Joy Boy was an Oars from the past. Now let me tell you why. If you look at the Rocks Pirates Jolly Roger, it is an Oars. Why would he make an Oars as his Jolly Roger? Another thing he does is recruit Kaido at a young age. He may have done this because he knew that Kaido was a descendant from Joy Boy. I also believe that Rocks may have told Kaido that and maybe that's why Kaido is so obsessed with Wano. Now with Blackbeard, we already know that he is similar to Rocks and it seems like he wants to be like Rocks. Just like Rocks, Blackbeard also has a Jolly Roger that resembles Oars. For some reason, Blackbeard has three skulls as his Jolly Roger. This looks exactly like something that both Oars and Oars Jr. wear. Since both Oars and Oars Jr. wear the three skulls, I believe that it may be a tradition passed down from generation to generation. If it was passed down from generation to generation, then maybe Oars the first, also known as Joy Boy, passed the tradition to them, and then Blackbeard used it as his Jolly Roger. Another interesting connection with Blackbeard, his Jolly Roger, and Oars is a connection with the real Blackbeard, also known as Edward Teach. Edward Teach's Jolly Roger looks like it has the devil holding an arrow to a heart. His Jolly Roger has a man with horns, just like Rox's Jolly Roger, which looks just like Oars. Oars is also called the demon from the past or a devil from the past, just like the real Blackbeard's flag had a devil on it. Blackbeard is also with Mariah right now, who also has ties with Oars. For part 3, I will be talking about Punk Hazard and the Yeti Brothers. Punk Hazard has a ton of ore symbolism in it. Right when the Straw Hats get to Punk Hazard, they see a danger sign. It is a danger sign that was put up by the Marines and the world government. Notice how the logo for the sign of danger is an ore's head. This is probably because Oars the First was the government's greatest enemy. They continuously put dirt on the Oars name by doing things like making them seem very dangerous, scary, making them the logo of danger, and even calling them the devils of the world. Notice how they call them devils, which is the exact opposite of gods. Just like how Joy Boy, also called the devil, is the exact opposite of the celestial dragons, also known as the gods of the world. Another example of Oars being Joy Boy symbolism in Punk Hazard is the Yeti Brothers. The Yeti Brothers are giants, and their fingers almost look red, so I feel like they could be descendants of Oars. If they are somewhat related to Oars, then Oda was hinting at Oars being Joy Boy by giving both of them straw hats. Another hint from the Yeti Brothers is from their names. This theory with their names yet again includes Rocks and Roger. The Yeti's names are Rock and Scotch. These names are supposed to resemble Rocks and Roger. The name Rock is supposed to symbolize Rocks, while the name Scotch symbolizes Roger. Now let me tell you how. Well, Rock is just like Rocks, so those are simply connected. However, the name Scotch doesn't sound like Gold or Roger. Instead, it symbolizes Gold.
scotch is in fact a gold color. Also, many big alcohol brands call scotch gold instead of using the word scotch. For example, Gold Label Reserve, Scots Gold, Gold 100% Scotch Whiskey, Isla Gold, Canadian Gold, Winter's Gold, and McKellen Gold. There's probably more, but you get the point. Since the Yeti brothers are wearing straw hats, Oda is once again connecting Rocks, Roger, and Joy Boy, who are also known as Ors the First. Another connection between the Yeti brothers' names and Rocks and Roger is the phrase Scotch on the Rocks. This phrase shows that Rocks and Roger are somewhat the same. This phrase refers to having the alcohol drink scotch with ice. This phrase also shows that Rocks and Roger are somewhat the same. There's another connection with only one of the Yeti brothers' names. Did you know that there is another One Piece character with the same name as Scotch? He is a part of Kaido's crew. This Scotch has red hair that looks a lot like Ors the Third's hair. Maybe Oda is showing that both Scotches combined are supposed to symbolize an Ors that wore a straw hat. Kaido's Scotch is also a cyborg. Who is the other main cyborg in One Piece? That's right, Frankie. If you take a look at Frankie in Punk Hazard, when he's fighting with the other Scotch, his hair looks like two horns, which makes him look like an Ors. At the same time as this, Nami is in Frankie's body because of Law switching them. Nami is the same character that Luffy put his straw hat on. She's one of the only characters in One Piece to wear the straw hat. Is Oda symbolizing? an Ors from the past wearing the straw hat but having Frankie look like Ors while having Nami inside of him. Maybe this is too much speculation, but I do feel like there's some connection with Ors and the Yeti brothers. There is just too many hints that makes it all seem like it's not all a coincidence. The last thing that connects Punk Hazard and Joy Boy is the giant kids. In Punk Hazard, we find out that Caesar the Clown has been trying to create a drug that can make normal sized humans into giants. He is testing his drugs on kids that he kidnapped. He wants to be the one to create it so he can go down in history as one of the greatest scientists ever. Also notice how he has horns coming out of his head. Well after this we find out that the government has been trying to create giants for a while and Law even says that he believes they want to create giants so they can have the greatest military power. If the world government had armies of giants, no one would be able to stop them. If you look at the giants that show up in the background when Law talks about this, they aren't Elbaf giants, but they're Ors giants. The government wants to recreate an Ors army that they can control because they've already seen the power of Ors 800 years ago. They had to fight against Ors so they know that they were the most dominant race in terms of strength and power. Part 5 will be about Pangaea. Pangaea was a supercontinent that existed during the late Paleozoic and early Mesozoic eras. Pangaea may have been a thing of the past in the real world, but also in the One Piece world as well. Let me tell you why this may be true. The castle in Mary Joyce is called Pangaea Castle. Pretty weird name for the world government's castle, right? Another connection with Pangaea is the bridge in Tequila Wolf. This bridge supposedly connects islands. It is also a bridge that was commanded to be built by the world nobles 700 years ago. Is the world government trying to recreate Pangaea by connecting all the islands together? I believe so. More proof on the world government wanting to recreate Pangaea is their logo. If you take a close look at it, it looks like the four blues with Mary Joyce in the middle while they're all connected with the bridge. Now why would the world government want the whole world to be connected, or Pangaea, or in one piece of land? They want this because it makes it easier to rule over the people and to take away their freedoms. The world government can't control places in the New World and the Grand Line because each location is separated by water. The Grand Line and New World allows pirates to run around freely, doing what they please. Now you might be saying, what does this have to do with Ors and Joy Boy? Well, it has everything to do with Ors and Joy Boy. Ors' nickname is the Continent Pooler. If the world government once ruled over one piece of land, also known as Pangaea, 
And I believe that Ors the First pulled it apart, creating the Grand Line, the New World, Wano, and the geography of the whole world. This could explain why the climates in the Grand Line are so much different from island to island. The exact opposite of Pangaea is pooling continents, just like how the exact opposite of the world government is Joy Boy. Ors must have created the Grand Line and the New World knowing it would give freedom to all the races in the One Piece world, and to his allies that go against the Celestial Dragons. He pulled Pangaea apart for the future generations. What if the reason the New World is called the New World is because it is literally the New World? The Old World would be Pangaea, which would make the New World being the New World and also the Grand Line. The New World is the new geography of the whole Earth. Okay, well back to Ors. He also created Wano by pulling apart different pieces of land with different climates, taking each piece of land to the New World and then connecting them all together, while also creating the greatest borders. YouTuber Tekin101 claims that geography is everything in One Piece. Well if all of what I theorize is true, then geography is everything, because the geography of One Piece is a key to the One Piece and the whole history of the world. The geography of One Piece means everything to the world of One Piece. Proof of Ors creating the Grand Line goes all the way back to Skypiea. The proof of this includes Nolan. 400 years ago, Nolan was an explorer that found many islands in the Grand Line and in the New World. When he found the Shandians, they have never seen any foreigners or people outside of their country. Don't you think that it's weird that they lived isolated from the world and were finally found only 400 years ago? This proves that the Grand Line is somewhat of a new thing. Nolan was the first to explore through most of it, because it was only made 800 years ago. Nolan also finds the Tontadas before people took over Dress Rosa. The Tontadas, like the Shandians, were isolated from the world. Lastly, I'll be talking about my theory on the Void Century, the One Piece, Wano, and the Will of D. I'm going to assume that Ors can live up to at least 300 years because the Elbaf Giants can. If he can live for at least multiple centuries, then he could have been alive for the whole Void Century. At the beginning of the Void Century, I believe the world was in One Piece, also known as Pangaea. Still around the beginning of the Void Century, I believe a great war started between the Celestial Dragons and the Ancient Kingdom. This war may have lasted a hundred years and by the end of it, the Celestial Dragons won and took over the world. Joy Boy was alive throughout the whole century and was probably the leader of the Ancient Kingdom army. It would only make sense for some sort of giant being, being Joy Boy, because the Void Century is a 100 years gap and only some sort of giant could have been alive for the whole Void Century. Throughout the Void Century, Joy Boy realized that he was going to lose the war against the Celestial Dragons, so he destroyed the world ripped it apart, and created the current geography of the whole world that we know today. He did this because he wanted his allies to be able to fight against the Celestial Dragons in the future. His allies were the Fishmen, the Neptunians, the Skypeans, the Kazuki Clan, the Alabastans, the Tontadas, the Elbaths, the Amazonians, Merfolk, Shandians, the Minks, the Lunarians, and probably other people of the Ors race. When he created the Grand Line and the New World, he made an island for each one of these races. I believe that he owned the Noah, and he might have also caused some sort of cataclysmic event. Maybe when he created this geography, it caused a great flood throughout the whole world, and he put all of his allies in the Noah to keep them alive, just like how Noah saved the animals in the Bible. Okay, so now, I believe Wano was the last kingdom and island that he created. The reason I believe this is because his huge head is an Onigashima, which means that he may have died right after creating it. More proof that he did this right when he was about to die is Toki. She was born around 830 years before the present day. When she was about 26, she traveled all the way up to 30 years before the present time. After she time traveled, she states that she's looking for the land of Wano. The reason she doesn't know where it is is because it didn't exist in her time. Ors must have told her that he's going to create Wano and then told her to travel 800 years in the future. Then, 
he put together the six pieces of land in Wano and also created them the greatest borders. After this, Boris I put the people of Wano here and then told the original Kazuki leader what the One Piece is and where to find it. He told them to create the Poneglyphs for the future generations and to place very important ones with their allies from the ancient kingdom. I believe that when someone finds the One Piece, they will learn all of this knowledge. I also believe that there is a lot of wordplay with the word One Piece, but that one of the wordplays is learning the fact that the whole world was once all in one piece. The ancient kingdom ruled over one piece of land and it was peaceful. Then the celestial dragons tried to take over the world and own slaves and be the rulers, so Ors had to rip Pangaea apart. Okay, so after Ors did all of this and lastly built Wano, I believe he died and his head fell right where Onigashima is. I don't know how he died or what caused him to die, but I still think that that is his head. Maybe this is why Kaido wants the land of Wano and why he lives in Onigashima. He may have learned this information from rocks and then became racist towards humans. After learning this, this may also be the reason he wants to see the whole world burn down. Lastly, I'll talk about the will of D. I believe the D may stand for devil because they are God's natural enemy. The government may have labeled people who inherited the will of D devils, just like how they labeled ores as a devil. The celestial dragons probably believe that they are good and the will of D people are evil. If they believe people with the will of D are evil, and if you take the D out of their initial, and put it in front of evil, it becomes the word devil. We also know that the government labels anyone that goes against them as devils when we see that Robin's nickname is the demon child. People with the will of D are passing down Joy Boy's will. It is in their destiny to go against the celestial dragons. Soon we shall see the truth of the void century and the truth of Joy Boy. Well this pretty much sums up my theory on Joy Boy. And if you like this video, then please remember to hit the like button down below and subscribe. And thanks for watching.